So it's got. All right, just get a car, relax. Okay? Yeah. That's the end of your test. And thank you for that last little bit there, Daryl. <laughs> there you go. Yep. So, the main man. Yes. This is the intro, another one. This will be the second one in a row now where people do their mock tests, fail their mock tests, <laughs> <laughs> and then. What, Daryl? And then they passed, then they passed, they passed oh, their driving license plate. Everybody, just a tiny bit, just a bit that says passed. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, nice one. <laughs> so, congratulations to Daryl. Thank you, man. So, you. would you mind sharing your experience, please? Uh, it was good, you know. It was only like, what? I don't know how long it really took, you know. I think it was like 30 minutes or something like that. Okay. I thought I did something wrong because I come back so quickly, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But she's like, oh, I'm glad to tell you that you've passed. I was like, yes, man. It's just like a big weight just lifted off my shoulders, man. Yeah, it does really feel like that. Yeah. So did you use the sat-nav? Uh, yeah, we did. We did use the sat-nav okay. straight away. And then she just gave me directions. We didn't have to do any independent oh, driving. Okay, so you started with the sat-nav? Yeah, we started with the sat-nav and she just started giving me directions. Okay. Yeah. Um, how did you find the route? Was it was, it... Do you know what? It was, it was all right, you know, we went down this way. We started following the road around this way and then, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just good. It was good. You see, when, do you remember when we um, took that right turning and then I went into the left side? Do you, remember, do you remember? I can't remember where it was. There's a traffic light, then we have to turn right, but it's a one-way road. And then yeah. we turn right up there. But remember yeah. the first time I turned left, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. I was yeah. in that left lane. So you went up that way? Yeah, we went up that way. So I already knew that route. So Good. I just, it was, yeah, I knew how to handle it, man. All right. <laughs> um, your maneuver, what was that? Uh, my maneuver, it was just there. It was just a reverse parking. Yeah, yeah so you had an parking. audience. Everybody yeah, was little, watching everyone you. Was watching me, yeah. I messed up that, a little bit. How did that feel with everybody there watching? Did that, <laughs> did that you know play what? on your mind? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I was a bit nerve wracking. Yeah. A bit nerve wracking, but it was all right. I had to readjust myself and then, yeah. but yeah, I sorted it out. You yeah. did it, yeah. yeah. That's important though, because a lot of people get extra nervous when they haven't done it first time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what advice would you give those people? Just calm down and just readjust yourself. Just take it easy and then, yeah, you should have it. You should yes, have it. good advice. All right, so um, everybody that would like to watch Daryl's mock test video, stay tuned as that will be coming up. Yeah. And write down in the comments down below, thank you or whatever you want to put in. You know, I think the word I'm trying to look for is congratulations. <laughs> um, and yeah, enjoy the video. Hello, today crew, welcome to Two Day Pass. And we are joined by Daryl today. Daryl is another very nice driver. There's one part in particular that we want to look at. Do you remember what that is, Daryl? Yeah, I steer to the left quite a bit when I'm driving, so I, I need to, I need to work that out. Yeah. Something I noticed when editing a video. Um, by the way, this camera stopped working. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm having some technical issues. Um, I will be getting some new cameras shortly. Uh, so I had a guy from Spain, yeah. Eduardo, mm -hmm. and when I was editing his video, I noticed when he was driving. Yeah. He was leaning. Okay. And I think I mentioned that to you, yeah, didn't you I? Did, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not that. So what do you think it is? I, I really don't know. I think it's when a car's coming towards me and then I think I'm trying to get out of his way. I think that's what it might be. Lovely. So it's something that's distracting us yeah, then. I think yeah. So, yeah. so I I hold my hand up as well. I was guilty of that. I yeah. shared that with you. My instructor to scream and shout at me. <laughs> um tell me I was too close to the left and grab the wheel. Not really helped me give you any reference points. Mm -hmm. So we did give you a couple of reference points. Yeah. So, you know, that might work for you. There's other techniques uh, for keeping too far from the left. The one I use is I imagine the doors open. Right. And I always want to keep that door width from the left. Right, okay. So if I always imagine doors open, that can help me. I'm not saying it's going to solve the problem, but mm -hmm. that's how I do it. Okay. Yep, yep. All right. So what we're doing here today, if you're new to the channel, welcome. And we're here to do a mock test for Daryl. So Daryl is going to be given independent drive via signs and directions. So we won't be using a sat nav on this. We will be driving for roughly about 45 minutes. We will be doing a maneuver, reverse maneuver at some point, And we may do an emergency stop or controlled stop. Oh, we covered that, didn't we? Yeah. So yeah, something, everything that's knowledgeable to you, obviously. And that's pretty much it. Um, all good driver points will be up here in green. All advisory driver faults would be up here in yellow, and all serious or dangerous.
dangerous driver thoughts. In red. We'll be up here in red. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any questions before we get started? No, not just this year, not just this year. No. I've got one last question for you. Can yeah. you just quickly fill us in on your history and your experience of driving? Okay, so I've done a, I've, I've done a little bit of driving. I've, I've had an instructor here and there. Yep. Uh, I'll say I've done about six hours with him. Okay. And then I've been driving like with like friends here and there as well. So I've had about, I don't know, maybe about 15 hours with them. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm here with you, mate. Cool. All right, nice. We're going to get started now. Um, so what I'd like you to do, we're going to just pop our seat belts on. And drive on when you're ready, and I'll give you directions for now, okay? Right. So cool. take your time. When you're ready, drive on. If you've been doing driving lessons, then you'll probably be aware of the POM routine. That's what Daryl's doing here. He's prepared the vehicle by selecting first gear, pulling down the clutch, finding the biting point, then setting the gas and getting ready to release the handbrake. After, oh, hang on, we're in an automatic car. So no, he's not done that. He's just put it in drive. After you've done that, you do your all-round observations, effective observations, that's the O part, and then finally, M for move. We don't even need to really remember that part, do we? So if you want to simplify it, set a good example to your driving test examiner before you start your driving test. Remember your POM routine. And I'll just find a convenient place to pull up on the left, please. Yeah, only one of these little raised curbs here will be fine. In fact, could you go further up to the telegraph pole, just here on the left, All and right. just stop? That might be that. Well, that may just secure the car. And I forgot to do the tell me question at the beginning, so we're just going to do the tell me question now. Right. So, would you be able to tell me, how would you check to see that your ABS, which stands for Anti-Lock Braking System, is working or not working before starting the journey? Well, it will tell you on the dashboard here. Yes. Do you know what that little icon looks like, the warning icon? You can say no if you no, don't. I it's don't fine. Know, no. It's just sometimes the examiners ask. So it's a circle mm -hmm. with ABS. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have okay. seen that, yeah. That's the warning light. That, yeah. All right, lovely. When you're ready, drive on. And at the junction, turn left, please. So take the next left. Do what Daryl just did and have a two-way conversation with your examiner. If you've forgotten directions and you're not sure where you're going next, then ask your examiner in a safe place in the road, not in a junction, and the examiners will be more than willing to help you by repeating the directions. All right, let's get that show me question out the way then. So when it's safe, I'd like you to show me how you would beep the horn. It's a pretty easy one, isn't it? Yeah, probably the easiest. Sometimes people are scared to do it, though. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's not dangerous. We're not going to scare anybody, are we? So it's a good time to do it. Well done. Sometimes I've heard stories that show me questions can be asked in very busy parts of the road. Okay. So that's why this question will start with when it's safe. So choosing the appropriate moment is your choice, yeah? yeah? yeah. Okay, the roundabout turn left. Daryl is definitely at a high experience level and more than capable to hold a conversation and keep control of the vehicle. This would be good for you guys, the viewers, on this video because Daryl asked plenty of important driving test questions. All right, Daryl, I'm going to ask you to do your manoeuvre. Okay. I'd like you to pull over and stop on the right side of the road. Checking the mirrors in pairs is a good driving test tip. Starting with the internal, then the right external mirror, signal right and manoeuvre and stop in a convenient and safe place on the right. Thank you. Now, in your own time, and if it's safe to do so, yeah. I'd like you to reverse back roughly two car lengths. On this occasion, if there is a driveway, yeah. it's okay if you stop in front of the driveway. We'll only be a few moments oh. and then we'll be moving off. Yeah. Okay? okay? So when you're ready, I'd like to reverse roughly two car lengths in a straight line, keeping a reasonable distance from your side of the curb. Two car limps will not include the position you start in. 
you have to reverse two full car lengths beyond the red towards the tree where the driveway starts in order to comply with the regulations. Darrell stops a little early. On this occasion, he receives a driver fault for reversing right control. Sir, okay. Where did we start? We started right by the curb, didn't we? We did, where the driveway is. Yeah. So from there to here? Is that too much? What do you Maybe reckon? More. I so think that's all right. That's a car space there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? And I'll, I'll probably say I'm in the next one. You are? So you've reversed how many car lengths? Yeah, two. Two? Yeah, one and a half. From there to here? One and a half, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> when you're ready, drive on, please. <laughs> Yeah, good. Don't panic though. It's okay. It's very normal. It happens a lot. Daryl had to re prepare there because the car was in park. It's important to keep calm, carry on, and remember your POM routine, which Daryl does. He places the car into drive, re observes, and then moves off safely. Well done. <laughs> you alright there? Yeah, man. I just hope I've got this today, Scott. You got it. Keep calm and carry on. It's all about focus, yeah? That's it. That's it. From over 10 years of doing this job as a driving instructor, it's all too common to see people have the domino effect. What I mean by that is somebody fixates on a driver fault that they've just committed, yet they're continuing to drive down the road thinking about the past. It's important to refocus on what's coming i.e. the future, and stay there, or at least present. Forget the past, there is nothing you can do to change it. Refocus, keep calm, and carry on. Okay, see this large BMW parked on the left? Yeah. We need about a car length between us, so I'm going to ask you to pull over and stop on the left, somewhere by that tree. Okay. Daryl signals, giving other road users and pedestrians enough time to understand his intentions. I would suggest giving at least five car lengths for this reason. All right, lovely. Thank you very much. Drive on when you're ready. Even after doing lessons, mock tests and intensive courses, my students still come back after doing the driving test saying, Scott, the examiner asked me to pull over about five times on the left. Well, throughout your lessons, I told you that is part of your driving test. So don't be surprised when your examiner asks you to pull over and stop on the left. This is all part of the driving test. At the end of the road, I'd like you to turn <laughs> Lights turn right. No problem. Thank you very much. After that idiot decides which way to go next, Daryl does his mirrors signal position speed look routine. And look what's coming up next. Now, every mark that the examiner makes on your driving test doesn't necessarily mean that you've committed the driver fault. Okay. It may mean that you've just completed a certain section of the test. Okay? All right, yep. If you spotted the width restriction coming up, then congrats. Now you'll be surprised to hear this, but this is the larger width restrictions. The sign that we'll see up here on the right hand side shows us that this is a seven foot wide width restriction. Now the next smallest is six foot six. This is six inches smaller than this width restriction. I recommend doing all width restrictions at roughly a walking speed and slow to a stop if necessary to see your distance from each side. Turn it right here. Yeah? Yes, please. Sorry, this guy's flashing us behind. I'm not sure why. So everything's okay, I think. The turn right, sorry. Okay. I just got a little bit worried there. Sorry. So. Yeah. Thing hanging out there, mate. Out of your house. Yeah. Nice to be there. Yeah, it is. Not to the camera, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sweet. <laughs> it's alright. You're the second person. <laughs> Two days in a row now. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that, Daryl. Right, I right. told you about that earlier. Nah, do you nah. remember? You've been a good civilian, eh? Yeah. I just got panicked. I was like, <laughs> What's I going thought on? I did something wrong. Yeah, I thought I was doing something wrong. 
Daryl is so aware. He's seen that car that came from the side road opposite this junction. Not only is he looking to the main road to see if it's clear of traffic before emerging to turn right, he's also identified the opposite side and the car emerging out onto the main road. Excellent observations. That's really good for the video, eh? Yeah, I think some people, it's, it's hard to see that it's a camera, I guess, from a distance, so... Yeah, it does look strange, doesn't it? Yeah. Just hope people get used to it, I don't want <laughs> To say thank you for subscribing and being part of this community, we're always giving free driving test bookings away every time the channel reaches its next thousand subscribers. For your chance to enter and win, all you'll need to do is subscribe and write down in the comments, free driving test. Good luck. I thought he was gonna steal it afterwards. It's like, <laughs> Sorry, okay. it. Is that a camera, is it? Oh, <laughs> <come> on. <laughs> Okay, the next roundabout, I'd like to follow the road ahead, second exit. When given directions to follow the road ahead, you will not need to signal. Here Daryl applies his right signal, which may confuse or mislead other road users. And on this occasion, for going straight ahead at the roundabout, no signal is necessary. This is a driver fault for signals correctly. Did I have to put my indicator on there? Your right indicator or yeah. your left indicator? I put my right indicator on, didn't I? Well, I was going straight ahead. So. Correct. So what were the directions? So given? I was telling him that I was going right when I was actually going straight ahead, I guess. So, yeah. Um, there's, the way that the examiners will look at your signal is would it benefit would it confuse right. so what do you think i think it could have possibly yeah okay remember guys i answer all questions in the comments so if you're unsure about anything regarding your driving test then please do ask your questions in the comments below and as soon as i have time i will reply and hopefully this will help you to pass your driving test first time so the people that requested the speed camera I listen to your request. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to work on the wide view. We'll definitely get the wide view in with the dash cam. That is my other camera broke today. Um, and I'll try and get that in on the other. I need to change the settings, guys. But I'll do my best. I'm listening to all of your comments. So please keep them coming. What's the speed limit, Daryl? 50 miles an hour. Well, there's a few. Bends and I'm a bit nervous for my speed. It's understandable, yeah, the vanishing points, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, it's definitely a good time to decrease speeds, yeah. yeah. Most UK driving test centres will have a section of the routes where there'll be a long road with speed changes or just speed changes in general. Now it's very important to notice as speed changes up so that when we reach the sign we know to increase in speed and it's very important to know where speed limits go down. So we decrease our speed early by the time we've reached the sign so that we are inside of the speed limit when we reach the sign. When passing the sign, we were at 35 miles an hour. This is a serious driver fault for use of speed. That section is only a small section. Yeah, probably about a quarter mile, something like that maybe. Right, um, there will be a sign further up. Uh, I'd like you to follow the sign. Oh, actually, sorry, it's very far away still. Um, just keep following the road for now. <coughs> Thought we were a little bit closer than we are. We have now completed a single carriageway of speed limits of up to 50 miles an hour. We've gone up a long hill called Ducks Hill, and now we are about to go down. This is a 12% gradient and we must hold our foot to the brake pedal to prevent the speed of the vehicle increasing too much. Be careful with them downhills, isn't it? Yeah, that's a 12% gradient. Doesn't sound like a lot, however, it is. Shout out to everybody that does their test at Belvedere and Erif. Unless you already subscribed to the channel, I don't know why you'd be watching this video. But anyways, oh, 
Oh, I do actually. That was a very good driver. You can get <laughs> lots of driving tips from him. Um, but yeah, the, the hill was there. Woo! It's fine, just follow the road ahead. Diversion. Correct, yes. Um, one of the side roads are closed, so there's a diversion sign for that. Okay, okay I'd like, at the traffic lights, I'd like to follow the sign to Rickmansworth. Yep. I'll start your independent driving now. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think I'm about to get in trouble again. Probably shouldn't say this, but I've noticed that most good drivers, probably down to experience, hold the steering wheel at the bottom. This does not make any difference whatsoever as anybody can hold the steering wheel wherever they choose as long as they keep full control of the vehicle. This is for reasons that everybody is different and we don't have to adopt any one style or method of steering. The most important part, as I've said before, is safety. So as long as you keep control of the vehicle, you can hold the steering wheel how you feel is comfortable. Yeah, right, it's me here, Keith again. That driving instructor, I don't think he knows what he's talking about, like, because if you cross your arms in an accident and the airbag goes off, you're gonna blow your face to smithereens. So I'd avoid you crossing your arms when you're driving the car because you might get your face blown off. Yeah, so the next sign, it's still a little bit further ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Miss the timing on this joke, so I'll just say it normally now. <laughs> okay, I'd like you to follow the sign to Bushy now, please. Bushy, yeah. Bushy, yeah. When overtaking, make sure you have a clear view of the road ahead and a wide enough space. Keep at least one meter when overtaking a cyclist and increase your speed to overtake as soon and safely as possible. Yeah, sign in the bush for Bushy. <laughs> There's another sign coming up here. Show you where the turn is. So that's this cheeky little right here, yeah? It is, yes. Follow the road. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There'll be another sign for Bushy. Again, it will be in a bush. <laughs> and this time, Really, you can't see it, so I'm gonna let you know that it's straight at the roundabout second exit. Right. I'll remind you when we get closer, and we'll try to have a look at the sign. But yeah. you'll notice, unless they've chopped the tree down, it's, you can't see it. On the driving test, if your sign is covered by foliage like trees or bushes, you're most likely going to be given the direction verbally from your driving test examiner. But remember, if you're not sure where to follow, look for signs, road markings, and in the event that you have not been given any direction, continue to follow the road ahead. Here we have a speed down, and Daryl does a good job of adjusting his speed early before reaching the 30 mile an hour sign so that he complies with the new speed limit. Nicely done. So you see, when I do my test, yeah, mm -hmm. see how I said to you a minute ago, is that is it that cheeky little right here? Mm -hmm. If I asked the examiner that, mm -hmm. what would they say to me? They'd be like, yeah, you're right. Oh, right okay. So they will <laughs> answer is. me back, yeah? yeah? So I can clarify well, with them. I can't talk for everybody, but yes, you can, yeah. Right. Here's the sign. Straight yeah. second exit, please. Early vision, early decision, and the secret is slowing down before entering the junction. Here Daryl does this and sees two vehicles entering from the opposite side. This blocks the vehicle on the right, which Daryl would normally give priority to, and gives him an opportunity to proceed. Any other questions you have on your mind? We've got a very long straight road here, and this is the end of your independent drive, so I'll give you directions from now. Right. So you might as well pick my brains if, you, if you've got those questions. It can really be useful for people watching as well. Um, I haven't got any questions right now that ain't coming up to my head right now. But cool. If so they come, they will. If I can, I will. Alright, it's 30 miles an hour and I'm going, I was going 24 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. If 
they have an issue with that? Uh, was it for a considerable duration? No. Alright, yeah. And I don't have to be going bang on for it to do it. That's correct. That's not necessary, yeah. And a lot of the time, like we talked about vanishing points, like yeah. this situation, yeah, so your speed that. will fluctuate, yeah, due to conditions. The road signs tell you as well to slow down. Isn't Very it? good, yeah. So you'll normally have the road markings that say slow at hills, yeah. um, vanishing points like bends. Mm -hmm. So that's there as advisory to help people to adjust the speeds. And there's warning triangles sometimes, they're very useful. Mm -hmm. They can give us a heads up about any sharp bends or emerging side roads like this one we have on the right. Yeah. There's so many different ones, but they can be so useful, especially for people doing their theory test. Yeah. Um, hazard perception was a, something that I couldn't really get used to on the test, but seeing signs is a good clue about when to click. Yeah. At the end of the road, turn left. Oh yeah, that's smart, yeah. Yeah, it's easy. It's, it's in the introduction videos to most of these um, apps that we have. Okay, so it's probably worthwhile mentioning that this is one of the longer routes. Okay. okay? So as you can see, they're quite long roads, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. I like that though. Yeah, it's nice. They're quite smooth and flowing there's not usually traffic in this part of London yeah. um, so that's very nice it's comfortable enjoyable drive mm -hmm. um, obviously highlights speed changes stuff yeah. like that it's yeah. usually quite common on roads like this country lanes no pavements national speed limits and then suddenly it changes back yeah. to like what 30, 30 or something like that it can happen that right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was better. Yeah. Okay, talking about little naughty turns, um, the next one is quite hard to see. Right. And we don't have a big sign like we did last time at the bushy turn. Uh, this time we've got a little brown shed, at least that's how I recognise it, okay? Yeah, yeah. So when we do get closer, I'll tell you like the examiners will tell you, just to turn right, okay? And then we might all, everybody watching and us, see this little brown shed, which can be a little helpful landmark. Yeah. So it's not the first road on the right, it's the second road on the right. Okay. I think I've just shot myself in the foot because I said that way too early. <laughs> it's actually, I think, going to be the third. But let's have a look together. I'll tell you when to turn, okay? Okay. So you've seen your test, yeah? Mm-hmm. Is it half and half? Half you'll be on the Tom Tom and yep. the other half independent, yeah? That's normally how it works, yeah. I think I did get that right, that was the first. You slow down, turn right, there's the brown shed. Normally on your driving test, shortly after your examiner tells you to turn right or left, you will do your mirrors, signal, position, speed, look routine. The examiners will tell you in good time, so be prepared shortly after you've been given direction to do your mirrors, signal, position, speed, look routine. Look for gaps in houses or street signs to identify side roads. Okay, so everybody that's doing their test on a manual car, you'll normally be asked to stop on a hill. So I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, maybe let's drive up a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And if you wouldn't mind just stopping here on the left, just near this tree would be perfect. Thank you. And this is the last one that just completes the occasions of us pulling over and stopping on the left. Yeah. And this also double barrels into a hill start. Yeah, it does. So when you're ready and it's safe, I'd like you to drive on. Before changing to automatic, I taught manual for many years. You must set the biting point, hold the clutch steady, then apply some acceleration. Releasing the handbrake and moving off. Uh, had the wrong indicator. Would it have confused anybody? Yeah, it could have, yeah. Who? 
Well, no one was behind me, but, <laughs> but if a car was coming, they could have. Ah, oh, yeah. So, on this occasion. It was alright. Good that you clocked it, though, yeah? Mm. That is important. You're, you're correct. Well, it's hard to see, yeah. Mm hmm. Do you think that there would be a possibility of a large vehicle coming towards you on a road like this? Mm, yeah. Good. This is actually a bus route. Oh, is it? Mm. Okay. Private bus company. It's been a while since I've seen them, but the other day I was here, I had a lorry coming towards us, so it might not be a bus, it might be a lorry. Or is it people that, what, they got that? Like special needs or something, is it that one of them? I don't know actually, you might be right, it might be. I wasn't too sure when I saw it, it just looked like um, one of these sort of coach buses, you know, the small ones, what they call them, hoppers or yeah, something like that? Yeah, something. yeah, but like a private company, I'm not too sure what the company was, yeah. Okay, the end of the road, turn right. Daryl's mirrors, signal, position, speed, look routine is very nice, as we know. But here, what I'd like to mention is his positioning. The positioning is absolutely textbook standard. Now, he's just done a junction where he's emerged from a side road onto a main road, turning right. We want to keep the centre line of the side road that we're on until we emerge straight out to the centre of the new road, the main road, before turning right. Here Daryl has an extra challenge. Same junction, yet this is a downhill. He maintains control of the vehicle by braking and slowing the vehicle speed down early. He keeps to the centre line even though the road is a cork screw. He holds the position here and maintains good observations and emerges straight out until he roughly reaches the center of the main road before turning right. This keeps him to the left side of the road and the safest position as he joins the new road. Sometimes technology might not be updated. So look for the up-to-date signs on the road that you're on. Yeah, that sign just said 40 miles an hour. Correct. At the roundabout, which is in the distance, I'd like to just continuing to follow the road ahead. Now, at the beginning of the test, I didn't mention this, but the examiners usually tell you yeah. I'd like to follow the road ahead at all times unless signs or road markings state otherwise. Okay. So if there's silence, we follow the road ahead mm -hmm. unless signs or road markings state otherwise. Oh, okay. Northward, straight on. Smiling after doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I handed that wrong, Scott. Wrong? No, well, well, yeah, well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was kind of expecting to see a smile there. <laughs> so, fill in the gaps. People are probably thinking, what the hell are these two guys talking about? So, how did you handle that? Well, last time, well, I, went, I saw the car was going mm -hmm. straight, and then the other car was. A, what was he doing? He was just waiting there, so I just mm. took my opportunity. You did, yeah. So that would be the blocker car that was going straight, yep. which made the other car wait. wait yep. And you took that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Very nice. At the next roundabout, I'd like you to turn right. It's signposted police station. It's the second exit. Time to go to the police station. So this roundabout in particular, students don't see. Look for road markings and signs to identify junctions ahead. Now we have to go slightly on the white circle. The reason being is because that white circle is a little bit too large for the width of the road. Sometimes this can be the case, so if you believe it's safe and necessary to avoid hitting any hazards like extended bits of pavement when you exit the mini roundabout, then slightly driving on the white circle may be permitted. We're looking down the road and I call this looking long. Remember the awareness and planning really is the last skill to driving and if we look long we can plan early. Daryl notices some oncoming traffic with parked cars on both sides of the road. 
This is called a meeting situation and he slows down early to assess the situation and the width of the road. Can I ask you a shooter? Uh, when you're in doubt or if you have a question in your mind, it's probably justified. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at that gap, when you ask that question, yeah. what I did you think at that point? I didn't think I could fit through it. So yeah. So if you're in doubt, I would suggest don't. All right. Yeah. Okay, these are just suggestions, okay? Yeah. So I'm not perfect myself. Sometimes I make mistakes as well. Yeah. So I just have to be careful about what I tell people. And, you know, just, you can, you're very good at making assessments, mm -hmm. so I don't need to tell you. And you're on a goddamn mock test too, <laughs> Daryl. What do you think this is? <laughs> nerve-wracking that's what it is yeah it is very nerve-wracking um i did a mock test yesterday and the lady said she passed the driving test All right. straight away afterwards she failed a mock test yeah. she said she felt the mock test was more stressful than the actual <laughs> real test so it's a good sort of warm-up i guess to a real test because mm -hmm. if you find it more stressful then wow the test is going to be a bit easier then yeah, isn't yeah, it yeah. Okay, well done for avoiding the road kill. Yeah, then. no, I'll stop. <laughs> yeah. So, nice mirror check as well, okay? You, you looked, you mm -hmm. went round it and then carried on. So, that's what you need to do. Well done for changing direction. Okay, we're going to go have lots of fun now on roundabouts on our way back to the test centre or where we we're going to finish because right. there's lots of traffic around the test centre at the moment so we might finish a little bit before we get there. Okay. Right, um, so on the way to the roundabouts we're going to do the happy face, sad face road. That'll be the next one at the end of the road, which we're almost there, turn left. Uh -huh. So at the end of the road, turn left. Oh, okay. You have been warned, Daryl, the happy face, sad face road. And what is the deal with this? Well, we have a long downhill gradient, and at the end of a long downhill, it's super common to find some sort of traffic calming measure, like a speed camera. This one is a radar that senses the speed of the vehicle, and if we're over the speed limit, which happens to Daryl here, we receive a sad face. This isn't for a considerable duration, so this gets recorded as a driver fault for use of speed. It's like you got to put your foot, just leave your foot off the gas. Yeah. Just roll. Mm -hmm. So someone rolled a little bit too fast. Yeah, exactly. I like that one. Yeah, I never used to like alphas, but you know what? They're really growing on me. Yeah. yeah. They are very different to all other normal cars, course, you know yeah. what I'm saying? They do have a flair to them. I like the interior, uh, inside of it as well. Mm, I, haven't, I haven't seen inside them. I've, I've seen them a long time ago. I went to a showroom and saw some, but I never looked inside. Is it really nice inside? Yeah, I like, I like it, yeah. Okay, I'll have to. I don't know any Alpha showrooms in the UK. I'm no. sure there is one somewhere. Um, it's a Italian company. I think they'd be here. Anyone that knows where the Alpha showroom is, please put that down <laughs> in the comments below. I'd like to go and check it out. Right, um, we're almost at the roundabout, the first one. There are quite far and few in between, but we will get through lots and lots. Um, I'll wait until we're closer, actually, because we're still a little bit further out. When listening to your driving test examiner or following directions given by the sat-nav, you'll be told to turn right or left and possibly be given a number exit. Both are equally important, so listen carefully. Okay, roundabout, turn right, second exit, please. Yep. Next, we have a junction, and remember, you will be given directions in good time. So identifying road markings and signs early will give you a better chance to start your mirrors, signal, position, speed, look routine in good timing. It's important for many roundabouts that you know if there's lots of steering involved, 
to keep full control of the vehicle, you may not need to show an exit signal. Also, the signal may not be on long enough to benefit other road users. The road's all right today, isn't it? It's quite yeah, quiet. Yeah, nice and quiet, yeah. The way we like it. Oh, those are error messages coming up on the screen now. Don't worry about that, nice. Telling us the cameras are dirty, even though they're not. They're broken. <laughs> well, that one is, at least. Ahead we have Blanche Bridge. There are no priority signs but we are warned, and pardon my English, that oncoming vehicles in middle of road. When going, decide and make sure it's safe, then dominate the bridge and hold the centre of the road. Take him out between you as well, Scott. Okay, dominating the bridge? Yeah. Good. I was going to wait for him to come, but when I saw right. he was taking his opportunity, I took mine. Okay. Was there a big gap between you and that car in front? Um, did you close the gap? Yeah, I did, yeah. Good. Is there any reason why you closed the gap? Because so he doesn't come forward. Why so not? Doesn't, yeah, I'm going to fight. Good. You're connecting to the train. Yeah. And there's no gaps in between. No one can really get through, can they? No. And we're not doing that. Right. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Consider it, we're doing it to be safe. Yeah. yeah. So two different styles for two different types of situations. One, as Daryl just had, is a speed change up. And I failed my driving test for this reason. My change was to 30 miles an hour, and before I reached the sign, I exceeded the current speed limit I was in which was a 20 zone, going up to 25 miles an hour before reaching the 30 mile an hour sign. This method, we must make sure that we maintain the current speed limit until we've reached the sign. Imagine a bit of tape stretched from one pole to the other, and as soon as we've crossed this tape, we've entered the new speed limit zone. To work the other way round, if we have a speed down, we must make sure, as earlier we had this situation, to slow down before we reach the new slower speed limit sign, so that we comply with the new speed limit when we enter that new speed limit zone. Named after Sullivan, yeah. which is far too popular and successful to be watching any of my YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he turns into the wrong side of the road. You see where that van is, yeah. the oncoming traffic? Yeah. He went back to Saudi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He called it Saudi Corner, not me. So please don't direct any hate comments <laughs> at me. And he's from Saudi. Oh, yeah. Still 40 mile an hour road, yeah? Correct. And we'll know that because there'll be reminder signs. Yeah, yeah. I see it now, yeah. Okay. What about if you're on a road and you don't see reminder signs frequently, like you don't see any signs telling you the speed limit? Um, you should just go back to, like, is it 30 miles an hour or something like that? You could assume it's a 30, that would be a fair assumption. Um, the correct way that we're supposed to teach people is to go by the last sign that you've seen. Oh, right. yeah? Yeah, yeah. You know the tech on the car? Yeah. Again, it's a nice little bit of tips or advice, but yeah. it might not be 100%, so oh, right. just okay. watch out for signs, okay? Yeah. All right, now, you will be given instruction to use the right lane, so I'd like you to use the right lane and go straight ahead at the roundabout. I call this roundabout the downhill roundabout and Daryl's braking early, keeping full control of the vehicle. For some reason, he's signalled right. And remember, we don't need to show an indicator if we're following the road ahead or going straight at a roundabout. And Daryl receives another driver fault for signals correctly. Here we have a 40 mile an hour road, and Daryl's going downhill. It's a very long downhill. Imagine you're on a bicycle, what would you likely be doing? It's the same for a car, and Daryl hears the noise on the vehicle, which warns us if we reach the speed limit, and he starts to gradually brake and reduces the vehicle speed. Without the warning, it's quite common for vehicles to go over the speed limit. So if you don't have this type of technology, make sure you maintain braking on a downhill. At roundabout, I'd like you to turn right 
third exit. You may also be asked to follow signs to Pinner and you'll be turning right third exit. We're doing our mirrors, signal, position, speed, look, slowing down to roughly jogging speed before reaching the roundabout for early vision, early decision. Daryl's applied his right signal and is signaling right as he passed the first and second exit. Once he reaches the second exit, he checks his two mirrors to the left, signals left and allows the steering to relax, which gives the car a spiral to the left lane on the exit. Daryl may know that he's about to approach an unorthodox roundabout where he'll need to use the right lane to continue to follow the signs to Pinner. Or in this case, we're being told to go straight ahead, second exit. Let's see if Daryl signals right. <laughs> Hopefully not. And this time we are not only using the correct lane, but also Daryl is not using his signal and just following the right lane until he reaches the first exit to again check two mirrors to the left, signal left and allow the steering to relax and spiral to the exit. How'd I handle that Scott? Is that right? How did it feel? Not good. Good, I would agree, yeah. Uh, driving's a lot about feelings, so people will constantly ask instructors did I do that right? Yeah. Um, if we as instructors, it's just my opinion, keeps giving you a yes or no answer, mm -hmm. it doesn't kind of really help. Right. So where you trust your feelings and go with your feelings, that's probably a better way of knowing that you've done something correct. Okay. Yeah, because you feel safe, that means you've done it safely, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Same again, second exit, straight ahead, please. Yeah. Sometimes it's down to the discretion of the examiner. And unlike mini roundabouts, I believe it is important to show a left signal when you exit, especially if there are other road users around. So maybe I've marked this driver fault a little bit harshly. However, on this occasion, because there were other road users around, I do believe it's important to show a left signal when we exit the roundabout. I found it very difficult with the timing when I was on my driving lessons and the exact time to show a left signal when exiting a roundabout is when you reach the exit before the one that you need to take. When my teachers taught this to me, it still made no sense whatsoever. So what it took for me to understand the timing on the left signal when exiting a roundabout is for someone to physically show me, and it was at a reference point. This was sometimes where the traffic light was at the roundabout. They're normally placed where there is a crossing between the exit and entrance to the roundabout. That point where you can no longer take the first exit that is exactly where you need to show the left signal to tell other road users that you will take the second exit. I hope this makes sense. However, if you're like me and you learn more from being inside the vehicle, as I did, this will be definitely more beneficial and ask your driving instructor that you have at the time to show you a reference point for when to time your left signal upon exiting a roundabout. Guys, I'd just like to say I really appreciate all the time that you spend here. I know everybody's time is valuable and I really hope that I give you some value. If that's the case, don't forget to smash that like button. Let's get my videos a little bit higher up there so more people can benefit. So I really hope this helps people to pass the driving test. I know how cringy this sounds, but first time. As I really do help, uh, well, believe this helps. Um, tell me in the comments if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Um, but it's been an absolute pleasure to have you. We are almost back at the test center. Um, the cameras will be fixed hopefully within the next couple of weeks. So you'll be looking at better quality and better angles. 
Catch you guys soon. Oh, there's the police over there. Stopping everyone's hands. Mm-hmm. This is good. Making the roads safer. Yeah. Trying to keep that two second gap. Good, well done. So you're doing your responsibility. Yeah. There's only so much you can do sometimes. You get stuck behind a slow moving vehicle. Yeah. You, know, you, can't, you can't really go around. I'd like to go straight through the traffic lights. Returning back to the driving test center from this direction has no right turns allowed at the traffic light. Commonly, there'll be parked vehicles outside the shops on the opposite side of the junction. And if this is the case, Using the right lane may help you gain progress easier and safer. After we've gone straight ahead through this traffic light, you'll have two mini roundabouts. Yep. At the first one, I'd like you to go straight ahead. And at the second one, I'd like you to turn left. Okay. First exit, yeah. First roundabout, straight ahead. Second roundabout, turn left. Daryl receives a driver fault for control steering. We're not 100% in any lane as we approach the first roundabout. For this reason, I have marked a control fault of steering. This could be called as lane discipline. Ideally, the best lane to use at the first roundabout will be the left lane. So after you pass the parked cars outside the shops we described earlier, make sure to check your interior and left mirror. And if it's safe to do so, shortly after, move into the left lane. If you do use a left signal to move across into the left lane, make sure you cancel this signal before you enter the first roundabout to go straight ahead. Okay, just after the invisible speed bump, yeah. I'd like you to turn right, it's the next road on the right. Another downhill turning to the right. Remember Daryl has very good control with his braking early as he approaches junctions and with this downhill it's extra necessary. Usually people get way too close to the pavement here but Daryl's maintaining his position. We went over this earlier and he has a textbook standard outstanding throughout the whole mock test route. Thanks Daryl. Okay Daryl, do me a favour. Uh, let's turn left please, next road on the left. We are now next to the driving test center and sometimes you're asked to take the next road on the left, California Raisin Hill, to do a controlled stop. Just after this white car, if you could try to pull up on the left, don't worry about driveways on this occasion. Okay. And just stop us before the next parked car so we don't block the road, yeah? Okay. We may have slightly obstructed the road here, so would you move up to the gap between these two parked cars, just so people can get past us? Okay. Uh, yeah. Much better, yeah. Can you see how now there's space for people to flow around the vehicle? Mm -hmm. And they've got more room, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. They have, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do next, just before we finish off, yep. is your emergency stop, which is now called controlled stop. Yep. My signal to you will be my hand up and the word stop. Mm -hmm. I will only ask you to do this if it's safe to do so. So wait for me to put my hand up and say stop. Cool. At that point, perform the controlled stop. Okay, yep. uh, happy with those instructions? Yep. Okay, so when you're ready and it's safe, drive on and wait for my signal. Thank you.
stop. Drive on when you're ready. <laughs> I'm not prepared for that at all, mate. <laughs> mm. I'm so tempted to do another one of those edits at the end here. Um, anyways, a very special thank you to Daryl. And if I have gone too far with the edits here, guys, call me out in the comments, please. But without Daryl, we wouldn't be able to make mock test videos like this. Obviously, he goes on to pass his real driving test after this. So an, an absolutely amazing from him. I knew he'd be able to do it. But it's nice to just see he keeps his calm, keeps his cool. He gets the job done. Top diamond geezer. So thank you to Daryl. Thank you to you guys for staying with us up until now. Remember, this is the Serious Fault. Cue edit now. <laughs>
but it wasn't enough. So by the time you passed through the 30 mile an hour oh, sign, still too fast. you were still too fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's about making that adjustment earlier. If you recognize the sign early, oh, obviously, okay. then you can adjust a bit early. Okay. All right. Um, the other serious driver fault for speed was for a 36 before the 40 sign, but that wasn't Ducks Hill, right? Because it's a 40 sign, Ducks Hill is a 50. Mm -hmm. That was, oh, got it. That's going to bother me now. Um, it was after Ducks Hill. There was a 40, and it'll be on the video. I'm not going to sit here for five minutes trying to remember it, but right. it'll be on the video, okay? okay? Yeah. Right, so it's about just, um, making sure that you stay at 30 so this is the opposite way round now this is what i failed my driving test for yeah um stay at 30 until you reach the 40 sign All right. then, then increase yeah because right. that's that boundary if you want to run a tape from sign to sign mm -hmm. once you break that tape you've entered that new zone yeah. so you can adjust yeah. it will be at different limits All right, right. That pretty much sums up, they're not my keys, <laughs> um, sums up the serious and dangerous. Uh, the rest of the driver faults would be on the video. Yeah. Would you like me to talk through them with you now? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's go for it. Okay, so in no particular order, um, let's start with the reverse right exercise. So you know we pulled up on the right and we yeah. reversed back roughly mm -hmm. how far? I don't know. You told, me it, you told me it was <laughs> two, a certain uh, length. A one and a half. Yes. Yeah. So what's the requirement? Two, two. So? So yeah, all right. Well, I need to go a little bit more. Yeah. So I gave you a driver fault there for just the distance, right? right. I'd like to see a little bit more on the observations if you do go more than one and a half. Okay. Car. I'd say at least every half a car length, maybe a whole car length. There's no criteria, but just double checking over the shoulders as we reverse back after okay. about car length is a very good skill to have because it's very likely that people can come along. No one did on that occasion, but, you know, that yeah. occasion thing can be, well, it doesn't really matter. Someone yeah. did come along. You didn't look. That happens on test as so well. So you see two car lengths, yeah? So yes. it, it's So that car in front of me, yeah. and it's the gap where this car could park in front of it. Is that what, it, behind it? Is so that the best it thing to do is to just draw a picture for you, because it's so weird to talk about. It's better just to... So this is uh, one car, mm -hmm. this is two car, mm -hmm. and that's two car lengths, but we start here, don't we? Yeah. So we've got to reverse one car length, which is where car two is, mm -hmm. and then another car length, which oh, would be okay. really where car three would be. Oh, okay. So it's just a question of if we're car one, we must go back, reverse back one, two car lengths yeah. it doesn't have to be spot on so where you said all right one and a half it's teasing you a little <laughs> bit but the requirements are two yeah all oh, right yeah. okay uh next one um this is actually one that was quite recent so we had the double roundabouts there at the end and before we reach the double roundabouts best lane to use would be which lane because remember we're going straight at the first roundabout left at the oh, second roundabout it's gonna be it should have been Left yes, right. so if we do pass the parked car, which is on multiple videos, uh, by the Shell petrol station, yeah. uses parked cars, <laughs> move across into left lane as soon as safe as possible, mm -hmm. stay in the left lane to go straight at the first roundabout, then you're already in the left lane for the second roundabout in order oh, to right. turn left. Yeah. So there's no change between roundabouts. Okay. Now it happens, people change between roundabouts, you did it safely, that bit was fine. Right. It was before you reached the first roundabout. So when you came towards the first roundabout, you didn't stay in your lane. So oh. I marked it down as control steering. You stepped over the lane marking. Okay, okay. And it's nice that I do put the keys hanging out the petrol cap there because that way people that are watching videos like this and That's I can it. defend myself against any accusations, which some are justified, don't get me wrong. Okay, I make mistakes, put my hands up. But then others will be on camera and then we can all see for 
reality what it really what really happened okay. all right moving into the next one so just be careful about your lane discipline when we approach approach roundabouts most people be looking to the right yeah. and then sometimes accidentally steer or incorrect lane discipline after because like you said earlier about looking somewhere can yeah. distract us can't i um so moving on all right uh there's a there's one that's hard to see here and it's for the signals now signals is actually something that's it probably as is important as your speed, mm -hmm. although you didn't get any serious driver faults for it. There was two roundabouts um, where we signalled right and we were going straight. Yeah. So those wouldn't be correct signals, but you're cancelling them quickly. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're completing the roundabout with the whole right signal yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. way through. Mm -hmm. You're getting to the first exit and you're clicking it off mm -hmm. straight away. But it's just not a correct signal if you're going straight. You don't need it. You don't it. need it. Oh. Yeah. Um, that happened a couple of times. Now, the other one, which is a necessary signal, is when you would necessarily need the signal. And that's if we exit a roundabout that has more than one lane. Right. So it's not really a mini roundabout, just a couple of lanes. Yeah. We exit. Now, when we exited a roundabout with the bus lane on the exit, that's mm -hmm. the, near the Morrisons, okay? Other supermarkets are available. Um, we're going straight and it's two lanes. When we exit, it's best to show a signal. Right. Now, on that occasion, there were a few people around you, mm -hmm. okay? So it would have benefited those Benefit people, see, yeah. okay? It's not enough to say it's serious or dangerous. You're not going to cause an accident if you forget the signal, but it's just going to help people out. Yep. Uh, the roundabout after that, you went straight again um, using the right lane, which is fine, mm -hmm. really good. Um, because we use the right lane to go straight, which is allowed at that roundabout, we have road markings. When we exit the roundabout, we'd like to show a left signal. Right. Now, we didn't show a left signal, mm -hmm. but we didn't have anybody that would have seen it. Yeah. The next car was really far away. There was no one looking to join the roundabout. Yeah. So on that occasion, didn't really have to, did I? it wouldn't benefit anyone. So I, my, my opinion is I don't feel that that would have really benefited. So it wouldn't have been necessary. Yeah. Okay, if anyone disagrees, please, I'd love to learn. And I'll hold my hands up if I'm wrong about something. And um, yeah, better myself, won't I? So, but I don't feel it was necessary. Yeah. Okay. So one was, one wasn't. And we got marked for the one that other people were around. Okay. So they would have benefited. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we've got a driver fault here for speed. Um, I think this is the last one. Yep. This is the last one. So total driver fault. So I'll explain the speed one in a second. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's below average. So that's six driver faults. Um, the last one that we were just talking about for speed was we were 34 um, in a 30. But it wasn't for a... I can't remember. Go on, please, <laughs> Daryl. I can't remember. Duration. Yeah, duration, that's it. So considerable <laughs> duration. Yeah. Um, yeah, you noticed you started breaking, you slowed it down. That was the happy face, sad face yeah. road. So by, I think by the time we got to where the sad face came <laughs> on, it was about 32. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm, okay, yeah. all right. But yeah, it wasn't for a considerable duration, so... Uh, the reason why I'm laughing about that is because recently this did come up for another student on his test, okay. and this was something that was mentioned to him at the end of the test. All so, right. all right, any questions, comments, or observations, Daryl? Um, no, I, just, I, I thought I did a lot more better than that, though. I didn't see it. If you guys want to um, write down good luck for Daryl, please do it. But he's already passed his driving test, so you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've been Scott. This has been Daryl. Stay you. safe, stay tuned, and peace. Okay.